Hi, this is Charlie for Topic. Today we're going to be looking at the new flagship speed light from Nikon, the SB5000. Man, that almost sounds like something out of the infomercial of a Paul Verhoeven movie. The new SB5000, because bigger names are better. And its biggest new feature is a proper wireless radio triggering system using radio signals. You now also unfortunately need to buy an optional extra WRR10 wireless remote controller transceiver for your camera. And if you own something like the D810 or D4, D5 with a 10 pin connector, you're going to need an extra bit in there, the WR18. So great, now you're going to have a camera with lots of bits hanging out. That wants to pair up with other cameras and flashes, etc. etc. So thank you, Nikon, for making it overcomplicated and getting us to buy extra bits and pieces. But in any case, let's see if the flash delivers what it promises. The flash pretty much looks similar to the SB900 and SB910. The moment there we see is a quick size comparison between um, the SB5000 and the SB900. It's overall much smaller than the two previous flashes. It makes it handy to use, handy to chuck in a gear bag. It's also slightly more powerful than the SB910. Now the great thing about this flash is that the recycle times now are a retina scorching 1.8 to 2.6 seconds, which basically is half that of the SB910. I just put it here on manual mode, full power, let's give that a test. So I'm getting closer to a four second recycle time, but it might be due to the batteries I'm using, but still with the same batteries in the SB910, it's half the recycle time, which is awesome. This flash also now features a whole new cooling system built into it to prevent it from going thermonuclear and melting to your hot shoe, like we had on the SB900, which basically overheated after five shots. So this one's now rated to something like a hundred shots at full power before it will start to overheat. To access this feature or switch it on and off, just go into your menu function and under your setup menu, you'll find it right there, a little fan icon, you can switch on and off. Don't know why you wanna switch it off, leave it on, prevent your flash from melting. When we look at the button layout of the flash at the back, we'll see it's fairly similar than previous models. One of the biggest differences now that we don't have a master uh, selection position anymore on the um, power selection switch. Uh, some of the buttons look a little bit different and we have new shortcut buttons on here as well. And we have a new link indicator on the side that only gets activated when you use it um, with the radio wireless feature. So on this flash, we also have an I button like on the, most of the newer cameras from Nikon. That's a little shortcut button to our menu functions. Press that, we'll see we have shortcuts to zoom, mode, and exposure compensation in this case. So we can flick through the modes, press OK. It's highlighted at the top and we have normal TTL mode. Auto aperture mode, guide number mode, manual mode, repeat mode, and back to TTL BL or balanced light. If you're not using it in TTL BL, maybe give it a go. It's an awesome feature that balances the flash with the ambient light. You can still also use the quick selection dial at the back to quickly access some of the um, functions you want to change. So if we press to the side to mode, it will activate the mode function as well and we can change that. Or if we press up, oops, first press OK to exit it. Put it back into TTL mode and if we press up, we have a quick access to our exposure compensation, which is handy as well. We also now on this flash have a Quick access button to our um, modeling lamp, which is awesome. That just basically activates the flash in a quick burst so we can see and model our flash. Right, let's look at some of the new menu features that we have. We press menu. You'll see we can still use the multi directional dial on the side to navigate between the tabs on the side there and the features and functions within each tab. 
So let's look at the tabs. We still have our custom menu option. And in here, what's really good is that we can activate or deactivate some of our modes, which is really good because that will make it quicker to get to the mode you're actually using on the flash. We'll see in the middle, there's a new tab. Um, this is specifically to set up our radio triggering and we'll deal with this in the next video. And down here we have our normal settings that we can change and fiddle with. And in here there's a really nice one like in most of the other Nikon flashes. You can set the spread pattern of your flash. We have a choice between center weighted, standard or even. Center weight is really cool. It gives you a bright spot in the middle that feathers out quite strongly. Standard was you know, standard pattern and even tries to brighten up the edges a little bit to give you a more even spread and that's really useful to use when you're shooting a little bit wider or you're shooting groups that you want everybody lit up basically evenly. If you're not playing with this you probably should be. Give it a go see what you get out of it. The one button I've skipped so far is the new wireless mode selection button right there. And if I flick the power all the way to on, to, over to on and I press this button, I'll cycle through all the different master options for our wireless connections. So there you go, the normal little snake with a lightning bolt function. This is our normal optical triggering system like we had in old CLS systems. I press it again, I'll cycle now to the little snake and wireless feature. This will unfortunately only work if you have that little wireless transceiver um, attached to your camera. So if we have this mode activated and we attach it to most Nikon cameras, you'll see an error come up, which basically says that the flash cannot communicate with your camera. You need that little WRR10 transceiver dongle, thing imaging bit. Right. But luckily, this flash is still fully compatible with the older flashes and the older CLS system, which is great. At least Nikon looked after us there. You don't have to go and invest in a whole new lighting system. So this flash will still happily act as master or as um, slave for your current CLS systems like on the SB19 or SB900s or other flashes. If you look in the description of this video, you'll find links to both videos showing you how to set up this um, speed light to be used in the normal CLS system, an optical triggering system, as well as setting it up for the radio triggering option we now have.